It was supposed to be a routine flight. A Boeing 787 Dreamliner, shimmering on the tarmac of Ahmedabad, ready to cross the skies to London. 242 souls on board, engines roaring, gear retracted, and then, silence. Just 36 seconds after takeoff, the pilot's voice cracked through the radio. Mayday, 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 no power, no thrust, going down. Nine words, then nothing. In that moment, one of the most advanced machines ever built ceased to be in control. And when the world learned of the crash, no one expected what investigators would soon uncover. Because this wasn't just a mechanical failure. It was a technological betrayal. A system meant to protect had turned on itself. This is the story of Air India 171. And this is the final transmission that stopped the world. June 12, 2025. Air India Flight 171 begins its roll down the runway at 1.38 p.m. The Dreamliner rotates smoothly, lifts into the skies, and then, inexplicably, the engines spool down to idle. The aircraft loses thrust just after leaving the ground. Speed bleeds away. Altitude collapses. And then, the cockpit voice recording captures it. No power, no thrust. Within seconds, the plane crashes into a building near a hospital. The fireball consumes nearly everything. Only one survivor walks away. So what happened? The engines didn't fail in the traditional sense. There was no fire, no explosion. Instead, it's as if the aircraft decided to stop flying. And that is what terrifies investigators. Central to this mystery is a system most passengers have never heard of, FADEC, the Full Authority Digital Engine Control. This software manages thrust, ignition, fuel flow, Essentially, it's the brain that keeps the engines alive. Here's the chilling detail. FADEC is supposed to shift from ground mode to flight mode at takeoff using something called the WOW switch, weight on wheels. But if that switch malfunctions, if FADEC thinks the plane is still on the ground, it could idle the engines midair. And that's exactly what investigators are looking at, a possible transition failure, one that could cause both engines to drop power at the worst possible moment. It would mean the aircraft wasn't confused. It was following instructions, faulty instructions. By June 16th, the investigation had recovered both black boxes, the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder. Buried inside was data pointing toward a catastrophic systems conflict, one where multiple sensors failed to hand off properly during the critical takeoff window. But even more disturbing, preliminary data shows the RAT, the Ram air turbine, was deployed. This system only activates when total electrical or hydraulic failure occurs. It's a last resort lifeline. Its presence suggests a full electrical breakdown in the early seconds of flight. Was this a software bug, an electrical anomaly, or something worse? A hidden flaw Boeing never anticipated. Whatever the cause, the aircraft wasn't just falling. It was flying blind. One man survived. A 40-year-old British passenger in seat 11A, Vishwash Kumar Ramesh, he was ejected through the emergency exit during the explosion, burned, injured, but alive. He recalls a loud bang, followed by flickering lights and a deafening silence. Then the impact. His account lines up with everything we now know. But here's the moment that chills investigators the most. The landing gear was still down, which means the crash happened so fast. The aircraft never completed its transition to flight. It never got the chance to become airborne in the eyes of its own systems. This was not a plane that lost altitude. This was a plane that was never truly flying. Once the black box data was decoded, something didn't make sense. In the milliseconds before the crash, the aircraft's onboard systems attempted to recover. The FADEC tried to increase thrust, only to be overridden. It issued a command, then retracted it. Engineers reviewing the data noticed what they called a phantom reset, a ghost command that interrupted the recovery process and locked the engines in idle mode. It wasn't issued by the pilots. It wasn't logged by the flight control system. So where did it come from? Some believe it may have originated from a corrupt data package sent during ground initialization. Others whisper about a deeply embedded software bug triggered by specific environmental conditions, like extreme ground heat and sensor misalignment. But no one had ever seen this before. And that's what makes it so terrifying. It wasn't mechanical. It was algorithmic. Just when investigators thought Flight 171 was an isolated tragedy, another pattern emerged, one that had been hiding in plain sight. Over the last 10 years, 
Five other incidents have involved unexplained power losses immediately after takeoff, all linked to aircraft using similar FADEC configurations. They happened in different countries, different airlines, but the symptoms? Uncannily familiar. Shortly after rotation, thrust dropped. System alerts flared inconsistently, and rat deployment occurred without the usual cause. In most of those cases, the planes recovered, barely. But with Flight 171, the timing was fatal. Suddenly, this wasn't a freak accident. It was a systemic warning, one that had gone unanswered for too long. The difference this time? The world was watching. Digging deeper, investigative journalists uncovered that a software patch for the FADEC system had been recommended nearly 18 months earlier. It addressed rare transition errors between ground and flight modes, precisely the type suspected in Flight 171. But the patch had not yet been installed on the aircraft. Why? The answer, according to insiders, was cost. Updating the firmware required aircraft downtime, recertification procedures, and retraining. So the rollout was staggered, optional, non-urgent. And now, 242 lives have paid the price for a decision made in a boardroom. The aircraft may have had a fix, but it never got the chance to use it. Since the crash, neither Boeing nor Air India has publicly confirmed the presence of the Phantom Command. FAA officials have remained tight-lipped, but among aviation engineers, one phrase keeps surfacing in internal documents, digital uncertainty event. It's a technical way of saying, we don't know why this happened. And that's what haunts survivors, families, and experts alike. In an age where aircraft are flying computers, we still don't fully understand the systems we've built. We trust them. We lean on them. But when they fail, they don't scream. They don't crash like they used to. They whisper. They glitch. They hesitate. And in that hesitation, 242 lives were lost. Just days before the final report was due, a forensic digital team made a chilling discovery buried in the aircraft's CVR. A garbled stream of data, not from the pilots, not from air traffic control, but from the aircraft itself. A self-generated transmission, never heard before in any 787 incident. At first, it was dismissed as static. Then, run through signal analysis software, patterns began to emerge. Data pings interlaced with timing intervals resembling a heartbeat. A rhythm, not random, not accidental. It was as if the plane was trying to speak. Aviation engineers now believe the final transmission of Flight 171 wasn't a cry for help. It was a log of its own dying process, broadcast in a language only machines could understand. A data-driven obituary. A record of a mind unraveling mid-air, systems clashing, protocols short-circuiting. And when translated into readable telemetry, the last line sent by the aircraft was simply this. Mode transition failure, no corrective path. It didn't say error. It didn't say fault. It said, there's no way back. That wasn't a malfunction. It was an acceptance. The plane knew it was going down. Air India Flight 171 didn't just fall from the sky. It was left behind by systems that failed it, by warnings that were ignored, and by a silence too comfortable to be questioned. In its final moments, the plane didn't scream. It didn't break. It whispered. Not to us, but to itself. A coded farewell. A machine, fully conscious of its own collapse. The most advanced aircraft ever built had no enemies, no storm, no violence. Its destruction came from within. From the invisible war between software and hardware, between decision and delay, between what should have been fixed and what never got the chance. And now, we are left with questions too heavy to carry. How many more minor glitches are ticking away silently in our skies? How many patches were pushed aside for profit? And when the next final transmission comes, will we recognize it in time? Because if a plane can understand its own end and send a message no one hears, then maybe the real danger isn't the sky. It's our belief that we're still in control. If this story moved you, if it made you question the systems we trust without thinking, then don't let this crash disappear into the fog of forgotten headlines. Subscribe to this channel, hit the bell so you don't miss what the world tries to bury, and share this video with someone who still believes glitches don't kill. Because Flight 171 didn't just send a signal, it left a warning, and it's still echoing through the skies.